Continuing, I'm sorry, but if you believe the newest death of OBL, you're stupid, Sheehan writes. Just think to yourself, they paraded Saddam's dead sons around to prove they were dead. Why do you suppose they hastily buried this version of OBL at sea? This lying, murderous empire that only exists with your brainwashed consent. Just put your flags away and think. That's right, absolutely. What the flag symbolizes is being killed. Now, I wanted to get James Corbett on, not only because I saw excellent analysis he was putting out and the nine other times you know, he's been killed, or the eight other, now making this nine, but also he's in Japan and he can report on the rising radiation levels uh, there. James Corbett is uh, edited and webmastered the Corbett Report. He also has a new book coming out, uh, Reportage, Essays on the New World Order, uh, CorbettReport.com. And he joins us from Japan. Uh, it's great to have you on, uh, James. Uh, give us your breakdown on this Jerry Bruckheimer scripted situation. Well, thank you for having me on today. And uh, every bit of that dread that you were talking about earlier that you feel is what I'm feeling right now. And that's why I was up until three or four in the morning last night as well. And um, I'm up at, at it again tonight because... I absolutely see the, the shift that's going on here. And I think what we've seen is really uh, they're discarding the Trump card in the war on terror because that Trump card is no longer usable. And so they've uh, they've jettisoned their old CIA asset who wasn't really working as their boogeyman anymore. And they're taking this game to a completely different level. And I, I can't help but think that that means that there is some tectonic shifts coming up. And I've been talking for, for some time now. I talked about on your program a couple of months ago about how this really represents the, the beginning uh, pre pre stages of, of a lead up to World War Three and a confrontation in the long run with China, and I think this is uh, another another part on that road. And uh, I think obviously they're setting up Pakistan for for some uh, major military action in in the very near future. And we know that uh, just six days before they they rolled out this uh, corpse to to tell us that uh, Osama is dead. We know that just six days before the uh, WikiLeaks um, uh, uh, false flag operation released those documents from Guantanamo, which said that, of course, they've got nukes planted all over Europe and they're going to unleash them if Osama ever dies. So I don't take that as a threat from the shadowy uh, mythical Al-Qaeda terrorist organization. I take that as a threat from the real terrorists who are, of course, puppeteering those, uh, those patsies and stooges. Now, when I mentioned Jerry Bruckheimer, for folks that doubt this, with the uh, private uh, Jessica Lynch story, if we remember, at the time I watched the video and I said, this is all scripted. And then I looked at maps of where U.S. forces were. They had controlled that area for at least three days uh, when Jessica uh, Lynch was, quote, rescued. And they kicked in doors, beat people up. Uh, she was hiding uh, uh, you know, under the hospital bed when they got there. And they told her... We're now going to tell you, and Jerry Bruckheimer, and I have the BBC reported it, had written the story that the men wouldn't fight, but she climbed up with a 50 cal on the top and killed dozens of them. And people were like, man, this is good for women in the military. And it turned out it was an army psyop to sell women in the military. It turns out she hid in the back of the vehicle cowering. And later she had to go public. She said, no, it's, it's not true. Uh, it was uh, actually several Hispanic members of the team. They ambushed and killed a bunch of folks. I forget their names, but two Hispanic uh, uh, members of the team. Uh, and it was just a supply detail. They fought off uh, the, uh, the, the Iraqi forces. And then five of the team that started saying it wasn't true, uh, they were uh, all killed. They were drowned. They died in car wrecks uh, in uh Phoenix, Arizona, they were in a nice neighborhood having a barbecue party for one of them, and a guy in a black uniform and a mask popped up, double-tapped him in the head, total black op, because they didn't want that story coming out that this was all a black op. Uh, we've got, of course, uh, don't forget, uh, the NFL player uh, who uh, went over there, and he wrote letters home, uh, Pat Tillman, and, and, and saying this is all made up. I'm going to come back and expose it, you know, the drug dealing, all of it. This war is fake. And they just said, look, you were a big recruiting tool. You die. And they shot him a bunch, people, black ops in his unit. They walked up on him. The Army uh, coroners went public with this. He obviously was begging, and they just triple tapped right in the head. You're going to go tell people about the drugs? Die, sucker! You're fragged! Ugh, New World Order! So the point is, Bruckheimer scripted the whole private lynch thing. She'd been there for three days. The Iraqis went to the U.S. forces who'd taken over and said, she's here, come get her. They knew no uh, Iraqi government was there. For three days, Bruckheimer got the whole event ready, scripted it, how, how she was the hero. 
and, and, and Corbett, I know I'm ranting. Um, this is so important. Uh, well, it, it is. It is important, and and you bring out some good points earlier about the psyop that they staged with the the phony fall, f- flash mob with those poor fluoride-addled uh, co- college kids. And I think uh, a lot of people that I've talked to have said, "Well, wow, that looks exactly like uh, what they were showing on 9/11 with the Arabs partying in the streets." And and I think that that to me is part of this media psyop because it's it seems like it's designed to give that reaction so that they're they're in a way showing you know the the Americans are are exactly what they were fighting against and i think that's that's again part of this whole psyop that's going on right now well you're absolutely right uh, when we come back i want to get your rundown of of what's fishy in the story in the photos with bin laden supposedly being dead and the larger geopolitical ramifications but in the minute and a half before break uh i, I saw you on rt really rattle off a cornucopia of the history and and, and why you question this Right. Well, uh, because as I've uh, as I pointed out in my article yesterday, and, and you put up on your site, uh, th- they have now announced Osama's death on, on about eight, eight or nine different occasions now that I've been able to account count, and that was just a quick count. But going back to uh, President Musharraf and uh, the Afghan Taliban and uh, the FBI counter terror chief Dale Watson, and uh, the the current president of Pakistan, uh, Benazir Bhutto, again and again, over and over for the past nine years, they've talked about, oh, he's probably dead. He's gone. We got word he's he, he died in the Pakistan earthquake in 2005, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so I don't see any reason to take this one any more uh, seriously until they release something resembling evidence of, of that Osama bin Laden actually died. But again, I think to a certain extent that's a distraction uh, because the real issue here is, is the geopolitical moves that they're going to be making based on this uh, orchestrated PSYOP. And that's what's giving me chills. We'll talk about the larger geopolitical when we come back. But remember, these are folks that murdered Pat Tillman. And, 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 the, and, the, and the Army coroner, the doctor, wouldn't lie. He said he was shot at far range. Later, the witnesses admitted the truth. They shot him. He begged for help. They went up to help him, and then they shot him uh, from three feet. Powder burns. Spaced right, right in his eyes. Shot him right in the face with a three burst from an M16. And then, and then they told you Al-Qaeda killed him. My All right, we only got five minutes oh, left uh, with James Corbett of the Corbett Report. Finishing up on the geopolitical ramifications of this, the public not buying it, the news is the dinosaur media panicking, and then a quick report, maybe I'll hold you over and just keep our next guest till uh, maybe 35 after or so, some news on what's happening uh, with the uh, radiation-stricken Japan and the clouds settling in over the U.S. All right. Well, on the, the geopolitical note, I think it's uh, extremely important to understand that uh, Pakistan is is being set up here. And the fact that Osama bin Laden was supposedly found just down the street from the Pakistan Military Academy, that is not by accident. There's clearly an attempt to to coordinate uh, something that will look uh, very much uh, it, it will implicate Pakistan, the Pakistani military establishment in this. So in order to justify the further incursion into Pakistan, and we know that, of course, the, the drones have been dropping bombs on Pakistan for some time now. So that's not necessarily a, a market shift in strategy. It's just the sort of like uh, the Gulf of Tonkin sort of made the, the Vietnam War into an official war instead of what it was before. So in the exact same way, they're just going to try to up the uh, the ante here and escalate what's already going on. But uh, this is a very disturbing move because, of course, we see uh, Pakistan and, and China uh, with their close alliance that, that may even become closer, of course, if they're threatened by U.S. aggression. So there's a very, very volatile situation developing here, and uh, this only plays even further into what's already sweeping through through the Middle East, of course, and with Syria looking looking up until this point, at, at any rate, like it was the next in the crosshairs. Maybe there's been a bit of a change now, but uh, all of this is very disturbing. And, of course, it's all predicated on the mythical phony war on terror with the phony boogeyman al-Qaeda, which, uh, which is okay in, in Libya, but uh, is the enemy in Afghanistan, apparently. Well, they um, always again, launch new wars with a big hyped PR event. You can see all the scripting, not just all the lies they've been caught in. And notice in the last few months, we've told folks, Pakistan's next, Pakistan's next. They're positioning all of this because Saudi Arabia knows they're being double-crossed and have run to Pakistan for nuclear protection. Uh, This is spiraling out of control. Uh, World War III, a hot war, folks, is right now on the table. The globalists are seriously considering it. But we go back to 2007, Admiral Fox Fallon, the head of CENTCOM, was ordered to launch the attack on Iran. That later came out, and he said no, gave an interview, and then resigned. 
Uh, then Cheney tried to stage the attacks on the ships. That even came out in New Yorker magazine with uh, Iranian ships, U.S. ships painted up like Iranians. But that didn't work. Uh, I mean, we are on the razor's edge uh, right now, James. This is this is real. This is this is incredibly real. And and you're I mean, all of the, the different aspects of the way that this uh, this Osama bin Laden psyop plays into their hands is is mind boggling. I mean, not only the fact we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of 9-11, thereby completely undercutting all of the momentum that was going into that for for relaunching an investigation into 9-11. Uh, all of that undermined as now the official story gets to tied up in a nice pink little bow uh, with uh, everybody cheering and waving the American flag. And uh, and. Uh, it also plays into the, this, the, the ongoing war. It plays into the distraction from the economy, which I think is a point that Rand Paul was making uh, earlier on the Judge Napolitano. Uh, it, it plays into their hands in so many different ways. And, of course, then it just helps to uh, discard one of their old uh, boogeymen that wasn't really doing what they wanted. But uh, I, 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 I th I'm, personally, I think World War III, if it is to be a hot war, will not get started without some sort of nuclear false flag. And that's what I'm worried about right now, especially given that they were just five days ago releasing releasing these uh, leaked documents that that supposedly indicate they have hundreds of nukes you know buried all over europe or whatever they're trying well, that's to right james to uh, you've just hit the key here you can always tell what they're going to do or are thinking about doing by the preparatory phase and it's nukes out of pakistan in america they're going to hit america or europe all of it scripted all of it building up then the cia agent caught with the uranium i mean this all happened I mean, here's CNN. And let, first, he said, oh, he's not CIA, and then later they had to admit he was. The point is, this is all converging, this is all moving, and you notice it's happening as the dollar is plunging. Uh, this is just unspeakable. It is unspeakable, and unfortunately, I, I can only see things escalating from here. I don't know if there's a way for them to, to back out of this at, at this point, because uh, they're, they're going on this momentum right now. And, uh, and we, we are seeing such incredible movements geopolitically right now that I think, uh, I think to a certain extent, this is also a, a, a diversion, uh, di diversionary tactic, because we know that the economy is collapsing, and they need a boogeyman to blame it on, and they're let's, going to use this. Let's finish up with more of the anomalies. And then the clear scripting of all this and all the things they now have had to admit weren't true, even inside their official uh, fable. And then let's talk a little bit about Fukushima. You're there uh, in Japan. James Corbett's our guest. Then we're going to talk to another uh, important guest as well.